Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum uh, dan juga selamat pagi. Okay, so kita akan mulakan kuliah ni. Okay, uh, yang lain boleh, <coughs> mereka boleh join later. Okay. Okay, so saya akan share screen. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, kita telah uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, uh, design of experiment for one factor experiments. Okay, so basically, I would just like to uh, go through okay with all of you. Okay, for example, like in this case, okay. Uh, <coughs> This is uh, to uh, the objective is to to determine, okay, determine the effect of temperature, okay, on the uh, in this case on the for example on the antioxidant capacity for example, okay, okay. So <clears throat> uh, we have um, we have uh, temperature as our factor, and then we have also different levels. Okay, and then uh, treatment. Okay, so this uh, terms, okay, you have to really know. Sorry, okay, these terms, okay, for you to understand what is the design of experiment. Okay, so uh, for example, the factor, the factor basically is what we are going to determine or going to study. Okay, so that is the factor. In this case, okay, we are going to determine the effect of heat or temperature on the, for example, antioxidant capacity. Okay, so the factor is temperature. Temperature is the factor. Okay, and then in order for us to, uh, in order for us to, uh, okay, so in order for us to, Okay, so uh, uh, in order for us to determine the effect of temperature, okay, so uh, we have to vary the temperature and that is what we call as levels, okay, so in this case, uh, in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, five levels of temperature. Okay, and then uh, the treatments. Okay, the treatments are the action that we that we uh, impart on our on our uh, what happened? Okay, on our samples. Okay, so whatever we impart on our samples, so that is the treatment. So in this case, okay, for one factor experiment, the levels or type, okay, are the treatment. Okay, it's the same. Okay, so the treatments also will be 60, 70, 80, 90, and also 100. Okay. Okay, so uh, the replications, okay, for it can be, it has to be at least three, okay, in food science. Usually it is three, two usually is not uh, enough. Okay, so we have in this case we decided to go for five, so it is still allowed. Okay, so the number of experiments will be five treatments, okay, times five reps. So there will be 25 experiments. Okay, so how do we do it? Okay, that is the design of experiment. How do we impart our treatments onto our samples? So that will determine the, the design of experiment. Okay. So in this case, it is a CRD. So completely randomized, meaning that uh, total ram randomization between all samples. So meaning there will be randomization between the replications and also the, the different replications for each treatment. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then we also uh, discuss about the completely randomized block design. Okay, so uh, in this case, in this example, we take the replication as block. 
Okay, so what we do is we we do the the carry out the the experiment uh, block by block. Okay, there is separation between the blocks. Okay, so meaning that there is separation between the replications. So we finish off the first replication first, second replication second, and then lastly is the third replication. Okay. Okay, so that is just as a recap. Okay, so for today. We will proceed with okay more than one factor experiment. Okay, DOE for more than one factor experiment. <clears throat> okay, so usually, especially at the at the uh, postgraduate le level, rarely you will be using only one factor in your experiments. Okay, so usually it will be two or more factor simultaneously. Okay, so for example, like uh, for heat processing, for sterilization, there will be temperature and there will be also time. So we want to look at the interaction between the two, the two factors. Okay, because in, in real life, rarely there will be only one factor that is affecting a certain outcome. Okay, so usually there will be two or more <clears throat> because real life is multifactorial. Okay, so... Uh, for that matter, how do we go about okay conducting experiments okay uh, with more than one factor involved okay um, so that we can achieve uh, achieve the truth okay so that is by carrying it out scientifically okay carrying carrying it out scientifically okay. Okay, so another example is extraction. Okay, there will be temperature, sample size, and also time. So meaning that there are three. Okay, so there will be three uh, factors okay, involved. Okay, so. Okay, so, so the statisticians okay, have designed okay, several uh, design of experiments that we can use okay, when we are dealing with more than one factor. Okay, so these experiments, this design of experiments, okay, uh, we have we can choose so that it suits our objective and our samples. Okay, among the examples are like factorial, split plot, CCRD, mixture design, okay, etc. Box Banken, Taguchi, all of this. Okay, so uh, but we'll just uh, discuss about these four because these four. Okay, so these are the most commonly used. Okay, the most commonly used uh, design design of experiments DOEs for more than one factor. Okay, the most basic is factorial. Okay, so the most basic is factorial. Okay, so let's go to the uh, let's discuss about factorial design first, and then we'll go to the other designs. Okay. So basically, uh, it is used to study the effects of two or more factors or variables. Okay, so uh, the treatment will consist of a combination of the different levels of each factor. Okay, and then there are two types. Okay, there is completely randomized factorial design. Okay, and then factorial design with blocks. Okay, there are uh, <coughs> these are not standard. Uh, names okay some books they will refer to it as uh, differently but basically uh, it's still the same design okay so uh, similar to to uh, one factor experiments okay similar to one factor experiments okay so uh, 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 you have a completely randomized version of the design and then you also have a block design Okay, it is quite similar. Okay, it's just that for in this case, we are dealing with more than two factors. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Okay, so factorial design is the, is the most basic. Okay, it's the most basic uh, design of experiment for more than one factor experiments. It is not meant to be convenient. Okay. Uh, among the several design of experiments, that is DOEs for more than one factor, actually vectorial design is the most difficult. Okay, it's the most difficult. Okay, so that's why it is not really that popular. 
but uh, it is the basic. So we'll discuss about it uh, so that it will enable, facilitate, uh, facilitate you to understand the other uh, more uh, robust, uh, not really robust, more convenient design of experiments. Okay. Okay, so uh, it is similar to CRD, completely randomized design, but involving more than two or more factors. Okay, so when we say that it is similar to CRD, it means that the way that we impart the treatment to our, to our samples will be the same where there will be total randomization among the samples. Okay, so regardless of the treatment and regardless of the replications, all the samples will be totally randomized. So that is why we call it as a completely randomized factorial design. Okay. And uh, treatments will consist of combinations of all factors. Okay. Uh, randomization will involve all treatments and replications at the same time. Okay. So let's take an example. Okay. So for this one, okay. So we have this. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's take uh, this as an example. Okay, so this is, all, but this is only one factor. So we have the factor as a temperature. Okay, let's introduce, okay, let's introduce uh, another experiment. Okay. Okay, so we want to determine the objective. Okay, to determine the effects of time and temperature on the antiox capacity okay for example so this is our objective so how do we go about okay designing the experiment so we have to determine first you know the objective Every, everything everything starts with the objective everything ends with the objectives okay so based on this objective we can determine the factors what are the factors Okay, factors are the aspects that we want to study. So in this case, we want to study or to determine. Okay, so we want to study, okay, or determine. So we want to study or determine the effect of what? Time, temperature. Okay, so meaning that in this study, we have two factors, okay? So in this study, we have two factors, that is time and also temperature. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have two factors, one is time, Another is temperature. Okay. Okay, and then similar to the, the one factor experiment, when we want to determine the effect of a certain aspect, okay, then we need to vary. If we, if we, if we make it constant, then we cannot determine the effect. For example, if we want if make if we were to if we want to, to determine the effect of time or temperature, okay, then we have to vary the, the temperature. 50, 60, 70, then only we will be able to determine the effect of temperature. When we increase the temperature, what will happen? When we reduce the temperature, what will happen? If we were to maintain the temperature as a constant, meaning that we are going to do the experiment, but the temp temperature is maintained constant at 60 degrees C, for example, then we will not be able to determine the effect because we cannot compare. When, uh, when it increases or it decreases because it is constant. So we cannot determine its effect. Okay. So similarly, when we have, when we want to determine the effects of time and temperature, <coughs> sorry, then we have to vary both. Okay. We have to vary both. Okay. So meaning that the levels, okay, the levels. Okay. So for time, the levels may be, for example, uh, 70, 80, 90 degrees C. Okay. Okay. And then we also want to determine, eh, sorry, this is, this is supposed to be uh, the temperature. Okay. 
Okay, and then for time, maybe it is like one, two, three hours, for example. Okay, so now we are varying the temperature and then we are varying the time. Then we will be able to determine the effect of time and temperature. As long as all the rest, all the other aspects of the experiment and the sample is constant. Okay, the type of sample, the amount of sample, okay, the dimension of the sample, the weight of the sample, etc., etc. Everything has to be constant. So whatever changes that we that we uh, observed, we can attribute it to either temperature or time, because only these two are uh, changing. Okay, but if other aspects, for example, the the weight is not constant or the the type of sample is not constant, then we cannot attribute any changes that we observe in our data to these two factors only. So meaning that it is inconclusive. Okay, so our 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 result results will be inconclusive because we cannot conclude. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> the rest we have to make sure that it is it is constant. Only these two. And these two factors are constant, uh, are not constant. Okay, we vary them. So now, what are the treatments? Okay, when we were to look at over here for a one-factor experiment, the levels are the treatments because it only has one factor. Okay, so the levels are the treatments. So it is the same. Okay, however, for a more than one factor experiment, the treatments is the combination of levels. Okay, it is a combination of levels. Okay, for example, okay, so for example, what are the treatments? Okay, treatment one, okay, it is uh, 70, 80, 90. Okay, so it is 70 degrees C for one hour. Okay, for one hour. Okay, so that is a combination. It is a combination of temperature and time. Okay, based on the levels. It cannot be any combination, but it has to be a combination of the levels. Okay, so <clears throat> again, the second one will be 70 degrees C for two hours. The third will be 70 degrees C for three hours. Okay? Because it is 1, 2, 3, 70, 80, 90. So now, okay, number four, it will be 80 degrees C for one hour. Number five, 80 degrees C for two hours. Number six is 80 degrees C for three hours. And then number seven, 90 degrees C for one hour. Number 10, 90 degrees C for two hours. And then 11, eight, sorry, this is supposed to be seven, eight, nine. And then number nine will be 90 degrees C for three hours three hours okay okay so meaning that okay we have three levels of temperature three levels of time so in total our treatments will be three times three equals to nine treatments so you can see over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine treatments. Okay. So in more than uh, more than one factor experiments, okay, the treatment is a combination of the levels. Okay, the treatment is a is the combination of levels. Okay. Okay. So now we ha we have nine treatments. Okay, so how do we go about Okay, applying it onto our samples. Okay, so how many replications? 
For example, we have three, we decided on three reps. Okay, so uh, number of samples. So it will be nine treatments times three reps equals to 27 samples. Okay, because for each of these, you will do it three times. That is what is meant by three replications. Okay, so three times. So meaning that you have nine, you do it three times, nine times three equals to 27 samples. Okay. Okay, now, uh, now we uh, are going to apply it on our samples. Okay, so let's assume, okay, we are going to do it, okay, factorial, completely randomized factorial design, sorry. Okay, completely randomized factorial design. Okay. design okay okay so now when we say completely randomized it will be similar to completely randomized design where all the samples have to be randomized okay all the samples have to be randomized meaning that we have 27 samples then we have to randomize <coughs> sorry 20 samples all the 27 samples even though they are from different reps. So meaning that there will be total randomization between the treatments and the reps. Total randomization. Okay. So <clears throat> what we, you need to do is, okay. So uh, for example, we want to randomize it using picking, uh, like picking straws. Okay. So we need to write on a piece of paper. Okay. All the number of samples. Okay. For example, sample one is, Based on this, okay, 70 degrees C, one hour, wrap one. Okay, now you have 70 degrees C, one hour, wrap two. Number three, 70 degrees C, one hour, wrap three. And then it is 80 degrees C, oh, sorry. We'll follow the previous uh, sequence. 70 degrees C, two hours, rep one. Five, 70 degrees C, two hours, rep two. And third, uh, sorry, six, 70 degrees C, two hours, rep three. Okay, so similarly over here, you will have like 80 degrees C, one, uh, one hour, rep one. Eight, 80 degrees C, one hour, rep two. 9, 80 degrees C, 1 hour, rep 3. Okay, and then you have 10, 80 degrees C, 2 hours, rep 1. 11, 80 degrees C, 2 hours, rep 2. And then uh, 12, oh sorry, I forgot about this one. Okay, uh, it has to be, okay, like this one. So over here, we have number seven. We have 70 degrees C, three hours, rep one. 70 degrees C, three hours, rep two. And then 70 degrees C, three hours, rep three. Okay, so seven, eight, nine, over here. Then 10, okay. 80 degrees C, 1 hour rep 1. 80 degrees C, 1 hour rep 2. 80 degrees C, 1 hour rep 3. 11, 12. Okay, and then you have 80 degrees C, 2 hours rep 1. 80 degrees C, 2 hours rep 2. Okay, 12, 13, 14. And then you have 80 degrees C, 2 hours rep 3. Okay, and then you have 80 degrees C, uh, 2 hours, uh, sorry, 3 hours rep 1. 80 degrees C, Three hours, rep two, 80 degrees C, three hours, rep three. Okay, and then this one is 14, 15, 
okay, 16, 17, 18, okay, and then followed by you have 18, you have 19, uh, 70, 80, 90, 90 degrees C, okay, one hour, rep one, you have 90 degrees C, one hour, rep two, 90 degrees C, one hour, rep three, and then you have 90 degrees C, two hours, rep one, 90 degrees C, two hours, rep two, 90 degrees C, two hours, rep three, okay? And then you have 90 degrees C, three hours. Okay, rep one, 90 degrees C, three hours. Okay, rep two, 90 degrees C, three hours, rep three. Okay, so you have 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so in all, you have 27 samples. Okay, so you roll each <coughs> each uh, each number of treatment, okay, in a piece of paper, and then mix them up, and then pull one. Okay, so for example, like you have your run order. Okay, for example, you the first one you pull up, then you have like 90 degrees C, two hours, rep three. Pull it again, you will have like, uh, maybe you will get like uh, 80 degrees C, okay? And then it is three hours, rep one. And then the yeah, third one, it, you will get 80 degrees C, okay, three hours, but rep three, for example. Okay, and so on. So when you go into the lab, you prepare your 27 samples, okay? And the first treatment that you have to apply, okay, is this one. Do not do it systematically, but you have to follow the run order. After you have you have finished all of this, then you do this one. After you finish all of this, then you do this one. So that is your run sequence or your run order. Okay, so in the lab, you have to follow this run order. Okay, so meaning that, okay, even before you start, then you have to prepare all the 27 samples. Okay, you have to prepare all the 27 samples right? and then you have to do all of it okay you have to mix all of them okay okay any questions so that is how we uh, we do design of experiment an experiment based on completely uh, completely randomized factorial design okay okay so uh let's take a break Okay, we'll come back in about 10 minutes. Okay, and then we'll continue with the other uh, uh, pictorial design with blocks.
Okey. Sekejap so, kita boleh boleh balik. Okey, sorry saya tak buka kamera dia. Okey. <coughs> um, so kita dah discuss tadi uh, regarding uh, Okay, so completely randomized factorial design. Okay, so any any questions? Okay. Untuk uh, yeah. buat untuk all the seventy eh twenty seven samples ni, kena run serentak ke atau boleh? Maksudnya ah. buat run buat a few apa first nine sample dulu ke? So, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So the best is uh, kena buat semua serentak lah. Okay, uh, the reason being that uh, it reduces any any possible uh, errors ataupun any possible uh, confounding factors. Okay, for example, kan? <coughs> okay, contoh kalau kita ambil yang tadi tu, if you were to take this as uh, this experiment, okay, now uh, it is only two factors. Okay, it is only two factors and we only have uh, three three levels for each factor. Okay, only two factors over here. And we only have three levels. Usually it is more than two factors and usually it is more than three levels. Okay, because remember three levels basically is the minimum. When we want to do a, a figure or a graph, okay, uh, the minimum number of points will be three. You cannot do a graph with only two points. It is not uh, conclusive enough. Okay, so if we were if we were to have only two points, then we can connect this because two points is the minimum to make a line. But whether it is like this or whether it is like this or whether it is like this, we do not know. So uh, 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 two points is definitely unacceptable when it, it comes to research at the postgraduate level. Three points is the most minimum. Okay, so usually you need like four to five points. Okay, so meaning that if it is four to five points, then meaning that you have, you, you will need like uh, at least four to, four to five uh, levels. Okay, for temperature and also time. So that will be like, it is four times four, so it will be like 16, 16, 16 times 3, then you will get like 48. Like, so you have to handle 48. Okay. So that is more a realistic uh, scenario. But let's just take this example uh, for the time being. So now we have 27. Okay. When, when, you, when you want to use a complete randomized factor, factorial design, then you have to prepare all the 27 samples. Okay, and then you randomize it. Okay, and then you apply the treatment. Okay, if you were able to apply it, okay, uh, all at once, then it is uh, okay to handle uh, 27 samples. But if it is like in this case, okay, where you have to, uh, for example, uh, use temperature, and then use the uh, 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 maybe a water bath, for example. Definitely in the lab, you will not have access to 27 water baths. Okay, maybe you will have access to one or two. Okay, so meaning that if, when, uh, if your run order is this one, so you have to set the water bath at 90 degrees C. Okay, and then take rep three. You cannot take rep one. You have to take rep three. So meaning that you have to prepare all the three reps. So you need to take rep three and then put it inside here for two hours. Okay. And then after that, it is 80 degrees C. Then you have to reduce the temperature to 80 degrees C. Okay. And then take rep one. So meaning that rep one also has to be ready. Okay. Take rep one and then apply it. Okay. So while you are doing that, okay, what will happen to the 27th sample? Okay, so uh, if you are 
uh, confident and also have a scientific proof that while you are doing all of this, the rest of the samples will not be affected, that it is okay. You can even do it across two to three days. The first day, maybe nine samples, second day, 18 samples, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 uh, the next nine samples, and then on the third day, you finish it off. Okay, it is possible. As long as you have scientific proof and justification that the samples that you have prepared is not going to change or uh, is, is not going to be affected by the delayed uh, uh, application of treatment and also by storage, for example, on the second and third day. Okay, because it has to be stored first. Okay, if that is the case, it is okay to do not all at once. Okay, but usually because we are dealing with food, then we know that food is a dynamic system where it always changes. Okay, it always changes. It is not a static system. Okay, so it is dynamic, it always changes. Okay, as opposed to like if you are experimenting with, uh, with uh, for example, like metal, then the metal will not change. Okay, uh, 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 meaning that will not change over three days, for example. Okay, so then you have more, then you are uh, justified. Okay, but usually in food, we, work with, we will try to finish it off within the same day. Okay, so uh, if you are able to finish it off within the same day, then it is the best. If not, then you need to justify uh, that the samples that you have prepared will not be affected. Okay. Uh, does that answer your uh, question, uh, Shavika? Yes, sir. thank you. Okay. Okay, so... Doctor, can, uh, I ask, can I ask yeah, something, sure. Doctor? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, if we do like this, the water bath, we set at one temperature, and then we put... Uh, because uh, the temperature is one factor, so the other factor is the time, and we put all the... We put all the time inside, meaning we put one hour, two hour, three hour, and then we take out, like after one hour, we, took out, we take out another one, and then the other, after an hour, another hour, we take out the mini, can't we do like that? Uh, you can, but then it won't be a completely randomized factorial design. Uh, when, if, when, if, you, if you want to do it according to this design of an experiment, then you cannot do it like that. You have to do it according to the sequence. But does that mean if we do systematically, it, our results will be invalid? Uh, it will not be... Uh, theoretically, yes, it is invalid. Okay, but, uh, but of course, only you will know how you do it, right? Okay. But the way that you describe is not uh, completely randomized factorial design. The way that you describe it is what we call as a split plot design which we will discuss because, later. Because you, it's, I, it seems like it's more practical if we okay, one temperature, but we put all three time at the same time and then we can take out. Uh, yes, definitely. That's why the statisticians, they designed this, another design of experiment that we call as a split plot. Okay. Okay, right. okay. okay, uh, okay so it, it can be done, but another design that which we will discuss later maybe today maybe next week okay okay so uh, so that is the completely randomized factorial design okay so i'm just giving you uh, all the options so uh, when you uh, uh, when you already know the types of designs that are available then you will uh, you can choose which design is more convenient and more appropriate for your uh, experiments okay uh, then that is why <clears throat> you have to go into the lab and see all any limitations try out your experiments okay just play around with it okay it's not going to give you a valid data just play around to get some feel of what you're going to do and then based on that then you can decide the best design of experiment okay like what uh, Kausa, uh mentioned just now okay so for her maybe it is the best better to do a split plot design or a split split plot design as opposed to a 
completely randomized factorial design. Okay. Okay. Uh, but honestly, okay, honestly, uh, in food science, okay, rarely we will use a completely randomized factorial design because of the uh, limitations and inconvenience that I have mentioned just now. Okay, uh, replying to Shafika's question just now, because we are dealing with food, it always changes, so we cannot <coughs> maintain that the quality will be the same or the food will not get spoiled. Okay, so usually what we will do is if you want to use a factorial design, okay, uh, then we will do a factorial design with blocks. Okay, so it's a factorial design, still a factorial design but with blocks we utilize this block okay so <clears throat> and uh, in food science okay in other in other fields it may be uh, it may be different but in food science okay so in food science it is uh, more convenient for us to take the replication as the blocks okay as blocks Okay, we take the replication as blocks, meaning that, okay, we have three replications, then we designate the replications as blocks, so we have three blocks. And we do one block at a time. Okay, we do one block at a time. But within the block, within each block, uh, it will contain all the different treatments. Okay, then only we, we, we can compare it on a let on a based on a level playing field okay uh, so it is within the same block okay so for example like in this case okay we take block one or rep one okay so for rep one now you have nine treatments nine samples okay due to nine treatments okay why nine because we have three levels of time times three levels of temperature. Okay, three levels of time and also three levels of temperature. <coughs> so we, we will get nine treatments. Okay, so these nine treatments you have to randomize. Okay, so for example, like you, you randomize it, okay, and then you get like, for example, one is uh, 80 degrees C for three hours. Okay, so there will be no replication because we are only dealing with one replication at a time. So for this one, this is rep one. So we are only dealing with rep ones. Okay, and then you pull another straw. Okay, and uh, that you have written all the nine, nine uh, treatments on it. Okay, so you have nine nine rolled up straws and then you pull one you pull one okay and then it comes out and it came out as 90 degrees c one hour and then the third one will be maybe 90 degrees c two hours and then the fourth maybe 70 degrees c three hours five 70 degrees c one hour six 90 degrees c Okay, three hours and seven is 80 degrees C, maybe two hours. Eight will be 80 degrees C for one hour, and then lastly will be 70 degrees C for two hours. So that will be your run sequence, run order. Okay, so when you, you go into the lab, okay, so you when you go into the lab, you only have to prepare nine samples for that particular day. Okay, so it is a more convenient uh, situation as compared to having to prepare 27 samples. Right, okay, so you only, only have to deal with nine samples. So, uh, and then uh, do not do it systematically, but do it according to this run order. Okay, so you do number one first, 80 degrees C. So coming back to our our 
uh, example, so you have a water bath, you put it at 80 degrees C, okay, and then you put in the samples for three hours. Okay, and then after that, finish. The second will be 90 degrees C. You have to jack up the temperature to 90 degrees C. Okay, and then for one hour. Okay, and then the third one is still 90 degrees C. Okay, so put another sample for two hours. Okay, or you can even, if this is the same, if this this is the same, then you can put in the uh, two samples. Okay, so after one hour, take one, and then take another one after two hours. Doesn't matter. And then seventy degrees C, and then ninety, eighty, and seventy. Okay, and after that, after you have finished all of this, you can immediately analyze your sample, or if you want, you can store it. Okay, but as long as you have scientific justification that storing will not affect okay the treatment that you have applied onto the samples okay so if it is antioxidant for example you have to store it uh, in the dark okay uh, under vacuum for example okay or in an enclosed uh, container okay so there won't be any oxygen to further oxidize it for example okay so if you can do that then you can store it Okay, and then wait for after you have finished all the three reps and then run the antioxidant capacity uh, analysis all at once. Or if not, then you, uh, after you have finished this, you can analyze them the following day, for example. Okay, because one day will not <clears throat> make too much a significant difference in, uh, in antioxidant capacity. So you can justify that. So it's fine. Okay, so tomorrow, you measure all the nine samples for DPPH or FRAP. Okay. Okay. So after that, then uh, following week, for example, for the following week, you prepare another nine, sa nine samples and then you do randomization. Again, different from this one. Don't reuse this randomization for each uh, replication, you have to do their own randomization, their own run order. You cannot replicate the run order of the of the previous uh, replication. Okay, do everything, pick straws, do everything uh, all together. Okay, and then you get another run order, and then in the lab follow that run order. Okay. Okay, so that is how you do factorial design. Uh, with blocks. Okay? Okay, any questions? So as opposed to having to handle 27 samples at once, so by using this type of design of experiment, you only need to handle 9 samples only. Okay, so it is, uh, it is more doable. Okay, it is more doable. Okay, any, any questions? Okay, uh, this is just uh, an example of a way to record your run order. Okay, it doesn't have to be like this. Okay, you can do any 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 form or format as long as you know what is your what is your run order and you follow the run order. Okay. Okay, so uh, because okay for because it is a more than two factor, more than one factor experiment. Okay, usually you uh, what is it is encouraged to do a two way ANOVA as opposed to a one way ANOVA. You can still do a one way ANOVA, but you lose a lot of information. Okay, so it is better to do a two way ANOVA. Uh, has uh, Dr. Shuhada discussed with you a two-way ANOVA? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Okay. okay, good. Okay, so I don't have to 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 uh, elaborate further. 
Okay. Okay. So uh, that is for uh, factorial design. Okay. So basically, factorial design is it is a combination. Okay, where you have the first factor, factor one. For example, it is time. Uh, it is temperature. Okay, for example, it is temperature. So you have your seventy, your eighty, and then your ninety degrees C. Okay, and then you have factor two. That is your time. So it is one hour, two hours, and then three hours. Okay, so this one also one hour, two hours, and three hours. Similar to this one, one hour, two hours, and then three hours. Okay, so uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So three times three. This is what we call as a factorial. Three times three design. Okay, so it is a three times three. Okay, okay. So, uh, like I mentioned, factorial design is the most basic. Okay, the most basic, but it is not the most convenient. Okay, because it involves all the possible, all the possible combinations. Okay, so it involves all the possible combination, meaning that it is not really that convenient. You have to do a lot of work. Okay. So for that matter, uh, uh, scientists and also uh, statisticians, they have designed other uh, more than one factor experiment which require less, uh, less uh, number of experimental runs. Okay. Uh, so that it is more convenient. Okay. However, uh, for uh, factorial design, even though it is less convenient, but when, when to me, uh, in my personal experience, okay, but when we want to look at the mechanisms, okay, look at the mechanisms, look at the cause and effect relationship, then factorial design is the best. Okay, factorial design is the best because when you look at the experimental space, for example, if you were to take an uh, experimental space. Okay, so we have... Uh, Two factors, okay. Just for the sake of simplicity, we'll just take, take two factors. This is the temperature, okay. Factor one, this is the time, okay. This is uh, factor two, this is factor one, okay. Okay, so like mentioned just now, okay, we take the temperature as we take three, we took three, it is uh, 70, okay. 80 and then 90 <clears throat> and then for this one it is time hour so one two three so factorial meaning all the possible combinations so you will have over here over here and over here okay this one also over here over here and over here this one so these are the treatments actually so it is a combination 71 hour 72 hours 70 and then uh, this is 70, uh, two hours, 71 hours, 72 hours, 73 hours. Okay, so this one uh, 81 hour, 82 hours, 83 hours. Okay, so uh, it, it, it involves all combinations. Okay, it involves all combinations. So when we want to look at the cause and effect. Okay, for example, if you were to get the result that, okay, the, the highest, okay, the highest uh, amount of DPPH, okay, is uh, 80 degrees C for three hours, for example. Okay, so we want to understand why it is so. Okay, is it because of uh, the, uh, because now, because uh, you see, when we do more than one factor experiment, there are two factors that are simultaneously changing. If it is a one factor experiment, it's, it is more direct. Okay, so so is it because of the temperature or is it because of the time? Okay, so we look at the temperature. So it is over here, eighty. 
Okay. So it is 80. Okay. So it is 80. Three hours. Then we can compare with 82 hours. When we compare with 82 hours and 81 hours, meaning that we are looking at the possible effect of time. Right, because the temperature along this, the temperature is the same. All are 80. Right, okay. So the temperature is the same. So actually we are looking at the effect of time. Or is it because of the temperature? Then we can compare it with this one. Right, we can compare with this one. Okay, because over here, along this, okay, it is... Uh, uh, all the time is the same because it is three hours. So we are looking at the effect of temperature. Okay, so it is convenient. If you want to look at the mechanism, if you, if you want to understand the process or what is happening, okay, uh, then factorial to me personally is the best because you can always compare to the right, to the left, to the top, okay, within this experimental space. But, okay, for example, if your focus is not it's not the objective is not on to 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 uh, uh, understand the mechanism of the process for example but you are more uh, the objective is to optimize the process then you are not interested in the mechanism so you can use a ccrd for example so it requires less less uh, experimental runs but it is more difficult for you to compare uh, based on like this one. Okay, compare based on a certain uh, constant uh, factor. Okay, so that you can elucidate the, the 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 effects and create understanding. Okay, okay. We I'll show you again uh, in the next design of experiment. Okay. Okay, so the next design of, design of experiment is the CCRD, the Central Composite Rotatable Design. Okay, Central Composite Rotatable Design. <clears throat> okay, so uh, it is uh, from a family of what we call as a Central Composite Design. Okay, which consisted of a face-centered or a rotatable CCD. Okay, so, but this one is the more popular one. Okay, it is a CCRD, Central Composite Rotatable Design. Okay, and uh, when we talk about rotatable, rotatability refers to the uniformity of prediction error. Okay, so meaning that uh, we want to have, uh, because this design of experiment is commonly used for optimization. Okay, response surface methodology, for example, uses a lot of uh, this kind of design of experiment that, that is the CCRD. Okay, so um, uh, when 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 okay, so when we do experiment, okay, so for CCRD, this is uh, this is for example, this is the uh, the the middle point. Okay, this is the center point. Okay, over here, this is the center point. Okay, so you have this is. Uh, factor one, and this is factor two. Okay, this is the center point. You have this one over here, this one over here, and then you have this one, and then this one. Okay, if it is a factorial design, okay, so if it is a factorial design, then you will also have, like I showed you just now, another point over here, and then another point over here, another point over here another point over here. So meaning it is more squarish. Okay, so the experimental space is more squarish in, in shape. Okay, the, that is the advantage. Okay, where you can compare between these two. Okay, between these two, you can compare between these two or between these two. Okay, but it takes a lot more uh, number of experimental runs. Okay, so what CCRD do, okay, is to make it more rotatable, meaning that it is like this. Okay, this is just a simple explanation. It is not a detailed explanation, but 
uh, it is enough for us as uh, food scientists and food technologists to 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 to, to understand what is uh, rotatability. Okay, so basically, as opposed to okay, I should should have, uh, I should not have uh, erased that. Okay, so this is factorial design. Okay, okay, so if it is uh, okay. Okay, so if it is uh, this one? okay, so if it is a CCRD, so the next point will be here. This point will be here. It will be here. It will be here. Okay, so it is more rotatable because it improves the the prediction error. Okay, so you will have a more uniform prediction error. Okay all throughout the experimental space okay because uh, the reason being that that's why ccrd is commonly used for response surface methodology response surface methodology is not a design of experiment it is a method of data analysis okay and it is based on prediction okay you are familiar with prediction based on a uh, two-dimensional for example, that okay, you have this uh, dpph, and this is the for example temperature, like our first example. Okay, so uh, for temperature of 70, 80, 90. So you get the dpph. Okay, over here, over here, and over here. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, if you want to know, uh, at 75 so what you do is you plot a graph and then based on this you will get y equals to mx plus c assuming that it is a straight line okay and then you 75 you plug it inside here then you will get x as 75 over here then you calculate the y which is the dpph then you can predict okay the amount of the capacity of antioxidant at 75 degrees C, even though you did not do the experiment. Okay, so that is prediction. Okay, so similarly, RSM is, just, is still the same. It's just that as opposed to only one factor, now you have two factors. Factor one, factor two, this is still the DPPH. So what you will get is, as opposed to, if it is a one dimension, a two dimensional, it is a line. If you have, a three-dimensional, then you will have a surface. So that is what we call as a response surface methodology. Okay, it is not a DOE, but rather it is a method of experiment. Okay? Okay, so that is why uh, we are uh, a lot of people doing uh, optimization. So based on this, you can determine which is the maximum point. Okay, the optimum point. Okay, so that's why a lot of uh, people, uh, scientists and researchers, when they are doing optimization, they would prefer to use a CCRD because they are not really interested in the mechanisms or, or the, the cause and effect relationship. But what they are more interested in is to optimize it. Okay, so to optimize it, but still, based on this, you can still get the determine the effects of uh, the different factors. For example, what are the effects of factor one? What are the effects of factor two? It's just that you cannot uh, elucidate, explain what are the possible mechanisms. Okay, why does it happen? Okay, you only know that what are the effects okay but you, you don't know why that the effects is as such okay because you it's difficult okay for example like here okay like here okay okay so like this one okay if it is a factorial design you want to know why this is high you can compare you can compare but if in but if it is a ccrd over here you cannot compare because there's no point here. You did not do any experiment at this point. You cannot compare because you cannot do any experiment at this point. You 
if you want to compare between this one, between this one and this one, now you, you it is quite difficult because comparing this one, this point and this point, okay, uh, both factors are changing, right? Okay, for this point, the F is over here. For this point, the F1 is over here. F2 is over here. For this point, F2 is over here. For this point, F2 is over here. So it's difficult to compare. Okay, or nearly impossible. Okay, so uh, you will, the, 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 the uh, advantage is that you, it is more convenient. Uh, you still get to determine the, the, effect of, uh, the effect of each factor. Okay, and you can get to optimize, but to really extract the understanding and the, the, the mechanistic relationship between the factors, it is more difficult. Okay, so a factorial design is a more straightforward and more convincing uh, design of experiment uh, if you are focusing on, uh, on the mechan mechanisms involved or the cause and effect relationship. Okay, okay. So that is the central composite design. Uh, rotatability we have discussed just now. Okay, all points at the same radial distance from the center point have the same magnitude of prediction error. Okay, so that's why it is called as a rotatable. Okay, so basically it consists of three types of experimental points. Okay, so let's come back to this. Okay, okay. So for example, this is the experimental space. Okay, this is this what we call as the center point. Okay, so this is the center point. Okay, and then you have, okay, this is factor one, this is factor two. Okay, you have this one, one point, and also at a, at a, usually at a similar distance, okay, another point, and also this one. Okay, so this and this, okay, we call it as axial points because it is on the axis okay so we call it as axial points okay so similar to this one okay so similar to this one okay so this what we call as axial points because it is on the axis okay and then we also have points over here okay so we have points over here, we call it as a factorial points. Okay, so we have center points, axial points, and also factorial points. Okay. So this is factorial points. Okay, for this one. Okay, similar to this one, similar to this one. Factorial mean, meaning because it is a combination of the two factors. Okay? A combination of the two factors. Okay, so uh, why is it that it is more convenient? Okay, why is it that it is more convenient? Okay, uh, the approach is different compared to a factorial uh, design of experiment where, okay, remember when we do design of experiment using factorial, okay, like this one, Okay, three reps, 27 samples. Okay, nine treatments. How do I get a red color? Okay. Okay, so now we have nine treatments. Okay, and three replications. So we get 27 samples. When we look at it, okay, for example, for 71 hour, you have one replication, 71 hour, the third replication, okay? And then you also have a 71 hour, okay, a 71 hour, okay, over here. As a third application. So each one, you have three replications. That is why you only have nine treatments, but 27 samples because it is being replicated three times. Okay. So it is good 
<coughs> because each replication, because remember uh, the purpose of rep replication, because we want to get a better estimation of the population mean. And also we want, uh, and the one is to for us to gauge, get a measurement of the error. Okay, so that will be used by the <coughs> formula uh, to calculate whether it is there are significant differences or not. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> However, for CCRD, okay, the the approach is they do not do replications. No replication. Okay. You only do this once, this once, 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 only. One time only. The only replication is at the center point this one and they will replicate it up to five to seven uh, replications like uh, factorial design okay each point is being replicated three times over here only the center point is being replicated but five to seven uh, replications okay what is the basis <clears throat> the basis or the uh, principle of this design of experiment is that, okay, remember, uh, apart from, uh, we do replications, apart from, uh, for the sake of uh, a better estimation, uh, a better estimation of, of uh, mm. the population mean, we also want to gauge or have a measurement of the uh, error. Okay, so that we, we can put it inside, can use it in our uh, uh, estimation of error okay, to calculate whether there are significant differences or not. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, uh, so based on that, okay, they only replicate the center point with the assumption. Okay, the assumption is that, okay, uh, error, estimated error. Okay, at other points are similar to center point. So they are saying that, they are assuming that, okay, the error at this point is the same as at the center point. At this point also the same as the center point. Okay, so all of these have the same error as the center point. So they only replicate the center point to determine the, the estimate, the error. Okay, so that is why they are able to reduce the number of experiment, experimental runs when they are, when using CCRD. Okay, and this, when they do this, so there will be a loss of, a loss of accuracy. Okay, so that the statistician has incorporated inside the inside the model or the mathematical equation that is that that uh, is used to determine the significant differences. Okay, so that is why we have to know the design of experiment so that we can use uh, the correct uh, statistical model. Okay. Okay, so that is the. Uh, Okay, CCRD. Okay, so uh, commonly on the center, only the center point is replicated. Asian and factorial factorial points are not replicated unless necessary. So estimation of error is only based on the center point, with the assumption that error at all experimental points are approximately the same, has the advantage of reducing the number of experimental runs. Okay, okay. So for example, like uh, in this one, for this one. Okay, so we have like uh, one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So if you use a uh, uh, factorial points, you need to do twenty-seven experiments. Okay, but <clears throat> for uh, if you, if you were to use a uh, CCRD, okay, you have nine. Okay, you have nine plus another four. 
or another five. Okay, so you have nine points plus another four replication. For example, if it is a, a center point, it's replicated five times. So meaning that you have nine points plus an additional four uh, experiments. Not point, sorry. You have nine experiments, okay, for each of the for each of the points, okay, plus another four experiment to replicate the center point equals to 13 experiments. Okay, so this is nearly half of the factorial design. And this is only what we are talking in this example, it is only two uh, factors and three levels each for each factor. So when you are dealing with like five uh, factors, for example, and uh, each factor you have like another four to five uh, levels. So you are talking about a lot of a lot of experimental runs. So you can reduce that by doing a CCRD. Okay, you will reduce. It's more convenient. Reduce your uh, experimental runs. But of course, nothing is perfect in this life. <laughs> okay, so you have to uh, be content, content with uh, losing some data, some information, where you, uh, like I mentioned just now, the mechanistic effect, uh, the comparison effect. So you will lose, lose uh, a little bit about that. So that is why you have to really understand your objective. What is your objective? Okay, because there is no, no perfect, okay, ideal uh, design of experiment. Uh, all the design, the DOEs, they have their uh, pros and cons. So it is up to you based on the objectives that you have to achieve and fulfill what design of experiments are uh, uh, suitable okay, for you to use. Okay. Okay. So any questions? Everybody is clear? Okay, good. So let's go. We still have time. Okay, let's go to the next one. That is the mixture design. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so mixture design is a special experimental design. Okay, it's a special experimental design. Okay. <clears throat> So, it is a special experimental design uh, for, not for, you can use it for any uh, type, of, type of experiment. So, it has its uh, preconditions, okay, uh, where, okay, it, is, it can only be used for experiments that fulfill this, this characteristic, <clears throat> okay. So this requirement or this condition, okay. If it does not, then you can. It is not suitable to be used, okay. So it is a more uh, specialized and more limited uh, use uh, type of uh, experimental design, okay. Okay, so it is a special experimental design. Experiment design used for experiments with more than one factor. If it is only one factor, then you do not have to use a Mr. Design, okay, because you only have one factor, so only one one aspect is changing. So you can always use <clears throat> you can always use uh, uh, one factor experimental designs. Okay, okay. So it has several characteristics. Okay, where uh, factors are first factors are dependent on each other. Okay, factors are de uh, dependent on each other. A change in one factor will cause change in the other factors and fractions of the factors will add to one. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so let's let's look at this. Uh, okay, I'll draw a new one. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our example just now. Okay, so we have factor one. That is the uh, sorry factor one over here. That is the temperature. 
and this is factor two, that is the time. So we have one and two and three. We have like 70 degrees C, 80, and also 90 degrees C. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so. So this is our, these are our experimental points. Okay. Okay, if you were to look at this, can I change? Okay, can I change the experimental points, the levels, uh, independently? Okay, for example, I want to increase this to 120. Can I do that? The answer is yes. Okay, will that, by changing 90 to 120, will that change the other factor? The answer is no. Similarly, if, you have, if I want to change from one to three, okay, and then I want to add another one, four, or change from this three to four, will it change the other factor? Will the other, another, other factor is a factor? The answer is no. Because these two factors, temperature and time, the way that we apply it, okay, we can apply it, apply it independent of each other. Okay, we can apply it independent of each other. We can apply temperature at whatever range. We can apply time at whatever range. They will not be affected. Okay. However, okay, <clears throat> if for example, we want to determine the effects of uh, different different uh, uh, combination, okay, a different combination of uh, artificial sweeteners in food, for example, okay. So we want to bake a cookie, a chocolate chocolate cake, for example, not a cookie, okay, chocolate cake, okay, and then we want to make a low calorie chocolate cake okay so of course we will need to add sugar but at the same time we only we want to also uh, replace partially the sugar with uh, uh, low calorie sweetener for example let's take sucralose okay so there will be so this is the concentration of sugar and this will be a concentration of sucralose. Okay. So, in a chocolate cake, because it has a certain level of sweetness that we have to attain, and it cannot go beyond, so the maximum, okay, and then the maximum of these two is, on, is only, for example, uh, 100 grams. Okay, so... When we reduce the sugar, okay, we we will uh, if we were to increase the sugar, we will have to reduce the sucralose. If we were to increase the sucralose, then we will have to reduce the sugar. Okay, so for example, like okay, if this is uh, twenty, okay, sugar is twenty, then it has to be eighty. If it is uh, eighty, then it has to be 20 right so if it is 50 okay then it is also 50 over here okay okay so can i increase this okay independently without affecting this the answer is no because the concentration of sugar plus the concentration of sucralose has to be equals to 100%. Okay? So in this case, <clears throat> we call it as a design, uh, sorry, as a mixture design. Okay? As a mixture design. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, can, can we... Uh, uh, what uh, mean? Uh, what well, sorry? I'm trying to say is that just by uh, us using a concentration, 
a concentration as uh, a factor, does it mean that to be uh, a mixture design? Okay, the answer is no. You can also use a non-mixture design, design of experiment, by but using a concentration as a factor. Okay, for example, you want to the same, okay, the same experiment, but the percentage is not dependent on each other. You can you you what well, your uh, in this experiment. You want to maintain the total amount of sugar and uh, low calorie sweetener. But if you decided that it, it is okay to use any any amount of sugar regardless of the uh, artificial sweetener and vice versa, any amount of uh, artificial sweetener regardless of the sugar, then you can have your concentration of sugar but it is based it is it is based on some uh, common or constant uh, measurement for example based on the amount of uh, flour for example okay so the concentration of sucralose also based on the amount of flour which is a constant Okay, then the amount of sugar can be anywhere, can be any 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 amount. Okay, so this is sugar, and this is sucralose. So it can be any amount. Okay, but meaning that uh, your cake will be, uh, may be so sweet that it cannot be consumed, or it is so bland that it is not going to be desirable. Okay, so. These are the two scenarios. Okay, you can choose either one. Okay, but if you were to choose this one, then it is a mixture design. Well, this one is not a mixture design of an experiment. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so okay, so that is the mixture design. Okay. This is very important. Fractions of the factor will add to one. Okay, so commonly used when the factors are mixed. So uh, what that's why we call it as a mixture design. For example, product formulation, uh, beverage, soursop plus papaya plus guava. Usually for product formulation, it, it is going to be a mixture design. Okay, missing ingredients. Okay, different types of starch. Okay, so what about the design of experiment? Okay, <clears throat> so... Uh, for a mixture design, the design of the experiment is more uh, rigid and also more specific. Okay, so uh, the most common is the simplex lattice and the simplex centroid design of uh, design of experiment. Okay, so let's take a look at the simplex lattice first. Okay, so basically for simplex lattice, it is it consists of seven points. Okay, so let's take an example of a three component uh, mixture design. Okay, so you have uh, A, B, okay, and also C. You want to mix them up to the point that A plus B plus C is have to be equals to one fraction uh, from from uh, using fraction. Okay, or if you want to use a percentage, A plus B plus C equals to hundred percent. Okay, so it has to be it has to fulfill that condition. Okay, so in that case, <coughs> uh. Uh, one option or one design of experiment that you can consider is what we call as a simplex lattice. Okay, so if you were if you were to look at the experimental space, so we have this tri triangle. Okay, so you have A, B, and also C, where at point A it is hundred percent A, and point B it is hundred percent B, point C it is hundred percent C. Okay, and uh, Okay, and uh, when we move from point A to point B, okay, and any other point, it is a mixture. Okay, any other point on the diagram, it is a mixture. So when we move from point A to point B, so what happens is that 
the percentage, uh, because all along this line that connects A and B, it is a combination of A and B. Okay, a combination of A and B. So when we move from point A towards point B, then when along the, the movement, along the movement, okay, A, the proportion of A is reducing and the proportion of B is increasing. When we reach the halfway point, then we will have, the, at this point, it is 50% A and 50% B. Okay, and then further towards B, after the half, halfway point, then you can see that the percentage of B is increasing and the percentage of A is, de is decreasing. Okay, so similarly, when we move from B at this point, B is 100% moving from B to C. So the nearer to C, then the higher the proportion of the C component, okay, inside the mixture. Okay, so and all at the halfway points, all of these are 50-50, 50-50 A and B, 50-50 B and C, 50-50 A and C. Okay, and uh, at the middle, it is one third of A, one third of B, and one third of C. Okay, so this is what we call as a simplex lattice. Okay, a simplex lattice, basically it is a triangle. Okay, and inside it, another triangle. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, okay, so that is a simplex lattice. Looks good, but uh, it is not good enough. Okay, why? Because if I were to erase all of this, you can see that, okay, these are the points, while these are the experimental space. Right, so you can see that out of the seven points, six are on the, on the lattices. That's why it is called a simplex lattice, because the majority of the points are on, it, on the lattices. Only one point is in the middle. Okay, so when we do prediction, okay, based on this one, how do we, how do we, uh, uh, how do we, oh, that is, okay, how do we uh, analyze it? It is using RSM. So usually we will have, okay, like that. Okay, so there will be a surface. Okay, so there will be a surface, for example. Okay, so there will be a surface. So this we will develop based on the data. We will feed, feed it into what we call as a Chaffee. Chaffee's equation, Chaffee's model. Okay, based on the Chaffee's model, then we, we, we can determine the effect of the three different components. Okay. However, this is based on prediction, like, we, like, like uh, I have uh, explained just now. So, when we do predict predictions, it is based on existing points. For example, like this one, we want to predict in the middle, it is based on this. Then only we can predict the middle, right? Okay, but in this case, only one point is representing the inside the inner experimental space. The rest are on the lattices. Okay, so it is like uh, not balanced. Okay, it's not balanced. So statisticians has came up with a 10 points augmented simplex centroid design. Okay, so basically it is the same. You have the triangle and you have the another triangle inside the triangle. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, right? So it is a simplex lattice design, but augmented meaning that we add more points to represent the inner experimental space. So we add another one, two, three. So this will represent this space, this space, this space, while the center will represent that space. 
Okay, so now we have a better representation of the experimental space so that we can have more confidence and accuracy in doing in <coughs> prediction, predicting our, our response. Okay, in predicting our response. Okay. Any any questions? <coughs> so that is the uh, mixture design. Okay, so it is also for more than one factor as long as it fulfills the requirement that is fractions of the factors will add to one. Okay. Doctor, yeah. Uh, kalau macam mixture design tadi, kita still uh, do replicates ke for each point? Ah yes. Uh, so, lepas tu kita still randomize uh, each point juga lah kan? Ah uh, betul. Okay. So for each point over here, okay. Bila kita nak buat ni, uh, we have point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, you have to replicate all the three points, all the seven points, and then also uh, by doing it, when you want to do it, you have to uh, randomize it. Meaning that first, maybe you do this one first. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then seventh. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So if there's no questions, uh, we'll stop here for today. Um. Uh, I have uh, posted uh, the practice too uh, in UKM Folio. Okay, uh, so uh, please do it uh, for your practice too, and the deadline is next Thursday. Okay. Um, Sorry, Prof, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I just want to ask uh, for optimization uh, mm -hmm. type of uh, the, uh, DOE, is it only applicable for the CCRD? Or can be used for other DOE as well. Uh, you can you, you can use it for other DOEs, even for factorial designs, because oh, uh, uh, the prediction okay it is a method of data analysis. It is not a it is not a design of experiment, okay. but it is just uh, <clears throat> more convenient to use CCRD, and you get better. Uh, accuracy in prediction because of the rotatability. Okay, Prof. Okay. 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 Uh, oh, actually, we have another 10 more minutes. Okay, so I think let's just finish this off. Okay. Okay, so the last one is, uh, the last one is uh, split plot design. Okay, so split plot design, I've mentioned just now, based on the question by Kausar. Okay, uh, split plot design is a type of factorial design. Okay, it is similar to factorial design, but with limited randomization. Okay, but with limited randomization and used when there are limitations to randomize between factors. Okay, for example, uh, pressure or temperature as a factor, so it is difficult to manipulate. Okay, similar to what uh, we have discussed just now, we have only one water bath, so we are using it for 90 degrees C, then afterwards, we have to uh, do a, an 80, and then afterwards, 100, so it is very inconvenient. It takes time, okay, because uh, we only have one water bath. If you have like uh, a lot, then uh, it is okay. Okay, so what happens is that uh, the statistician has came up with this type of design of, of experiment, which makes it makes it more convenient for us to to carry out our experiments. Okay, so uh, randomize levels of each factor separately. Okay, so this is the limitation over here. Okay, we ran randomize levels of each factors uh, separately. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so we have factors. We decide. Okay, it is not based on. Uh, it is not based on uh, randomization. Okay, we decide which factors are the whole plot, and which factor is the split plot. Okay, but the whole plot has to be the factor that is most difficult to manipulate. Okay, it is most difficult to 
manipulate. If not, then it will defeat the purpose. Okay, so you will end up with the same uh, difficulty. Okay, so you have to de designate the whole plot, the factor that is the most difficult to manipulate, as the whole plot. Okay, <clears throat> so you have uh, okay uh, three types of split plot design. Okay, randomized uh, uh, block and then Latin square. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just look at the at the at the uh, at the design. Okay, so that you can understand it better. Okay. I'll explain to you first. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> we'll take um, uh, our uh, example just now. Okay, we have factor one, the temperature. Okay, we have uh, 70 and 80 and 90 degrees C. And we have time, one, two, three hours. <clears throat> right, okay. And then uh, we need to do three reps and we randomize it. Okay, first, it came out as uh, 80 degrees C, uh, three hours, for example. Second is 80 uh, sorry. Second is, for example, you have uh, uh, 70 degrees C for one hour. And then third is 90 degrees C for two hours, for example. Okay, so you have one water bath over here. Okay, so when you go into the lab, you prepare your samples, okay, and then uh <clears throat> you do the the experimental uh the the experiment okay first run order is 80 degrees c three hours so you put it at 80 degrees c okay when it has reached 80 degrees c you put in your sample for three hours after that you will take it out and then the next one is 70 degrees c then you have to reduce it to 70 degrees c let it cool Set it again at 70 degrees C, wait until it, it, it uh, uh, reduces to 70 degrees C and then do your experiment. Okay, finished. Ne next experiment, 90 degrees C. Then you need to increase it back to 90 degrees C. So that is a lot of hassle. Okay, <clears throat> and it slows you down. So what you, 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 uh, what, uh, another option that you have is to use a split plot design. Okay, for example, like Okay, so now you have temperature and then you have time. Which one is the most difficult to manipulate? Of course, the temperature. Okay, so designate the temperature as the whole plot. So automatically, because it is a two-factor <coughs> uh, experiment, <clears throat> so now you have time as the as the split plot. <clears throat> okay, as a split plot. Okay, so what happens is that, okay, so if I were to draw a diagram, okay, so this is the whole plot. This is the whole plot that is the temperature. Okay, so how many levels? Three levels. So you divide it into three. Okay, so this is the temperature. Okay, so what temperature is this? Then you have to randomize. So randomize the temperature first. You have temperature 70, 80, 90, pick straws. For example, it came out as 90 degrees C. So this is 90 degrees C. Pick a second one, it is 70 degrees C. Pick, of course, the, the final one is has to be 80 degrees C. Right, okay. So this is your, this is your uh, <coughs> uh, whole plot. And then your split plot will be your time. This is your split plot. So it is one, two, three hours. So for each, you divide into three. Okay. So you divide into three. Okay. So uh, which one? Is it one hour, two hours, or three hours? You randomize. For example, you pick straws, it comes out as two hours. So two hours here. Another one, three hours. Another one is one hour. Okay, similarly, do not use the same sequence as the S490. For 770, you have to pick straws again. For example, it is one hour, three hours, and two hours. And then again, randomize again. So you get, for example, two hours, one hour, 
and three hours. Okay, so that means that okay, when you only have one water bath. Okay, you only have one water bath. Uh, okay, oh, this is the water bath. Okay. Okay, so this is the water bath. Okay, so as opposed to like this one, 80, 70, and 90. Okay, now you see. Okay. Uh, okay. So for this one, <coughs> your run order is, your run, so run order is, okay, first is this one, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So for the first one, it is 90. So what you need to do is set it at 90. Okay. So when you set it at 90, then you do it for two hours and then three hours, and then one hour. Okay, meaning that, meaning that you don't have to change your temperature. So that is a con convenient. Or if you have the space, you can always put all of this together. Then after one hour, take it out. After two hours, take this out. After the third hour, take that out. Okay? Okay, so and then afterward, after that, you finish your 90, now you reduce it to 70 degrees C. And then for 70 degrees C, you do for all of this. And then you increase to 80 degrees C, and then you do for all of this. Okay, so meaning that less manipulation of the temperature. So what does it mean is that, okay, your randomization. Okay, so like this one, you randomize everything. Okay, this is only for one replication, okay? For one rep. We're talking about only for one rep at this point of time. You still need to do uh, the second and third rep, okay? As long as, but for each rep, you cannot duplicate the randomization. It has to be new randomization. Okay? Okay. Uh, and then... Um, okay. So for this one, you only need to manipulate it only three times. For this one, you need to manipulate it nine times. For this one, only three times of temperature manipulation. Okay. So with that, you it is more suitable and it is more convenient. Okay. If you have to uh, manipulate something which is difficult to manipulate. Okay, so that gives you another option. So like uh, Kausal just now, okay, so when you ask about the question, so this is the speed plot that that is uh, more convenient to be used, okay, when you have this kind of uh, limitation. Does that answer your question uh, uh, at the beginning of the lecture, Kausal? Yes, yes, Prof. Thank you. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Okay, so with that, uh, any questions? Uh, prof, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, yang uh, tadi apa, yang split plot tadi tu kan? Mm -hmm. uh, boleh tak uh, kita do uh, replication uh, sekali lagi mm -hmm. maksudnya kalau macam water bath tu, uh, mm -hmm. dua, uh, two hours kita masukkan tiga-tiga terus uh, dalam uh, masa dua jam dalam water bath pada waktu yang sama. Kalau two hours, ha, you asyik. masukkan tiga-tiga terus. Ah, ah, betul. Untuk tiga rep tu. Ah, ah, untuk uh, uh, untuk ayah yeah, betul untuk tiga replication. So untuk two hours kita masuk terus tiga replication. Pas tu bila three hours kita masuk terus tiga replication. One hour pun macam tu lah kita masuk terus tiga replication. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Itu uh, boleh. Itu yang kalau you buat completely randomize. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, kalau you mm -hmm. ada enough space lah dalam tu. Mm. And, uh, mm -hmm. So you have uh, 90, dan lepas tu you add all the replication, then you masuk dalam tu. Mm -hmm. uh, so ataupun kalau tak, ta, uh, if you if if you do not have enough space, then you do a, a split plot with blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, alright, mm -hmm. alright, okay. 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 Any other questions? Okay. 
So if there are no questions, okay, so uh, please do your practice too. And that means that uh, my lecture is done. Okay, so in the lecture, that is. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So, um, untuk untuk for next week, okay, uh, we can start with our our quiz. Okay, we can start with our quiz. So, what uh, what you need to do, okay, uh, is just prepare a short presentation based on. Have all of you uh, got your your research titles yes bro yes, yes. Bro. okay okay good then uh for those that are uh, food science then you can use your research title okay uh then uh, do a simple presentation and then i will ask questions okay and then we will discuss it so based on that it will increase your understanding okay uh, and then uh, for those that are from nutrition okay just get a food science uh, a journal okay uh, based on food science okay that is uh, experimental research not observational research okay and then prepare the prepare the uh, prepare the presentation okay and then we will have the quiz. I will post uh, the instructions, okay, on in UKM folio, okay, and then we can start the quiz uh, uh, starting next week. So we can have uh, three uh, weeks of quiz, and then after that, uh, we can have our uh, Q and Q a session, and then your mid semester exam. Okay. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? No? Okay. So, so the, the, yeah. the, quiz, uh, the presentation is from the methodology part, is it? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? The, the quiz, the uh -huh. presentation quiz, uh, uh -huh. explaining on the uh, methodology part, is it? Uh, no, it is just it's just based on the design of experiment. Uh, the presentation, uh -huh. you will have the title, your objective, what are your factors, what are your levels? What are your treatments? Uh, how many replications? What are your responses? That's it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So if there are no questions, then we'll uh, stop here. Okay. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week, inshallah. Okay. So, assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Prof. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof.